Okay, so y'all yeah, I needed some rest. Like for real, for real, I needed some rest. And um I had got some rest, but man, y'all, yeah, I had this crazy ass vision. And like I said, I trust God when it comes to my visions and everything I just share. And um I couldn't remember it when I first woke up. I couldn't remember anything, you know, except for the very last part. And I ain't feel comfortable just sharing the last part and not remembering some of the beginning. So I had to sit there for a minute like, Lord Jesus, help me remember what it was that I seen. Because it's a lot of noise around. And it's almost like the movies where they got them oracles. And they be in them quiet, peaceful, serene environments where don't nobody come around them and bother them because they got something special. That's kind of like how it is with me. Um, but I'm dead sitting in the middle of the hood with all kind of noise and bullshit. So anyway, uh, then I got people doing sorcery and, you know, witchcraft. You got the devil, you got demons, you got everything, you know, and you got the Holy Spirit. So it's a lot of confusion, um, but the Holy Spirit is the one who kind of gives everything clarity in the end, you know. So, um, I don't mind the chaos. Um, I know a lot of that, I, I know that comes from the devil, but God, he, 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 he made all things and he knows how to deal with the chaos. You know what I'm saying? That's why when the Lord said the Holy Spirit is in you, I don't mind sharing my vision because I know I got God in me no matter what the devil do, no matter what the demons do. The Holy Spirit right there in me, so it's okay for me to share whatever I'm going through. So, um, basically, in this vision, I remember being in a room, and it was like a bunk bed or something, and or like a little twin size or full size bed or something, and I was in this bed, and I don't know if there was a sister or a family member or something that was coming in and out of the room, and there was some sort of uh, words exchanged, and um, I was like, well, I'm finna watch my children, and I, I had some sort of book, I had some sort of book or some sort of letters written on my shirt that was like a scripture or something i don't know but then i i had these two babies in my arms and one baby looked like melbourne my firstborn son but he's four years old now but the baby looked like he did when he was like 9 10 11 months you know like around the age where they start learning how to walk but they just the big old babies that you just carry around on your shoulder but they big and they get it to the point where they fit to be walking and running around and getting chubby where you can put them down but they still your little baby so you still pick them up and hold them and everything he was at, he was like that age um in the big old onesie and I'm um, looking at me and, and then kind of trying to talk to me like a grown man. And then uh, there was this little baby. And they both looked like they was boys, I believe. But there was this little that They were bald-headed. So I couldn't really tell. And I didn't see no pink on, 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 the, on the babies. The, first, the oldest one had on, like, navy blue. And then so, uh, and the other one had on, I think, white and green and blue or something like that. So then I had this little baby. Um, and the little baby, uh, was still a baby too. And the little baby was like, uh, the size of a baby that's maybe like five months, you know, like to where they looking around and they can see stuff and hold the head up and, you know, maybe six months. But the little, it was, I had a big baby and a little baby. And they look like twins. They look just alike. They look just like me and Austin. They look just alike. But they was just different sizes. And so I had uh, dismissed someone, I believe, from my family that was just talking and yapping in my face. And I wasn't hearing it. And then so next thing you know, I had set up in this bed and I had the little baby I mean I had the big old baby right here and then I had the little bitty baby right here 
And they were acting like they, I think they were acting like they were finna kind of go at it or kind of fight a little bit. Like, hold on. Uh, this my mama. And I was like, hold on. Like, I had to tell the big baby, you can share me. You can share mama. This your little brother, I think I said, or this your little sister or whatever. And you got to share. And... The uh, big baby was looking at me because I had laid the big baby down on the bed and picked up the uh, little baby and put the little baby right there. And then the big baby was looking at me like, what you doing? <laughs> and I was looking like, uh, I'm holding my baby and come on, you can get on this side. So uh, the baby looked at me like, and then kind of uh, hopped into my arms and I was holding both of them. And then when I looked down at my stomach, I was still pregnant. And they was finna kick my belly. And so I had to scooch them over to the side, like, to make sure that the baby was at the side and the big baby was at the side. And then I had this little baby bump in the middle, so I was still pregnant. And I had this little bitty tiny baby bump and these two babies already in my arms. And so, I, um, when I woke up, I didn't remember what I seen. I was like, God, let me remember, let me remember. And then I was like, hold on, I was holding two babies. I was holding two babies in my arm. My son is four years old, man. You know, so, like, I don't feed into everything it is that I see in my visions. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying, I, 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 I don't just write them off. And so, because things in the spirit is different a lot of the time. And so, I had these two little babies in my arms, and they were different sizes. And I went into uh, the living room, and my cousins was in there, and I think my older sister. And my cousin uh, Michelle, my cousin Jessica, and I think my sister Larissa. And I had found some little roaches, some little weed roaches, like three of them. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm finna roll these up. I said, but I ain't got no cigar. So I went to my cousin Jessica, and all their last name was Marshalls at one point. My grandma raised them. And I went to Jessica, the, little, the darker skinned one. And I said, Jessica, give me a cigar. And Jessica got a son. Jessica got a kid. But I, they kid, I ain't see their kids in this. It was, I'm just letting you know. So I went, my children was in the room. I had just had my children in my arms and or in this vision. Now, I only got one son that I know for sure, for sure, and I'm with child. And I don't know what I'm with child with because the doctors lied about it and never gave me the right to know what I'm carrying. So anyway, so, and ain't no telling what else they lied about. But anyway, so um, I went in the room, I went in the living room and I said, Jessica, let me get a cigar. And she was like, she looked around and was like, huh. Then when she gave me the pack, I felt that she had some weed in there. I was like, oh, she got, it was like a neat sack or something, like some weed. And it was in a little plastic, like bag, sandwich bag or something. And when she handed it to me, her eye got big, like, damn, like, yeah, I gave her the cigar, but I got some weed in there too. And when I noticed there was some weed in there, I was like, oh, shit, okay, now I'm finna take some of that shit out that bag and put it into uh that cigar with the little roaches i got and i'm gonna be good and then so uh uh everybody was looking like uh why you get it to her and you know blah 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 blah, blah in my vision so i don't know if i rolled the weed up if i ever did roll it up or not but i had got some weed from it right and i ended up in this little uh I don't know if it was like a garage or somewhere where some man came and started bothering me. And the man, like, was he was trying to convince me of something. Like, he was trying to convince me to hand over something to him that was powerful. Or he was trying to uh, convince me that I was less than or something that I wasn't. Or he was something. It was something that he was trying to uh, take from me or change or buy me or something. And I wasn't having it. I was like, mm -mm. I was like, no, no, no. 
whatever it was he was trying to get from me or take from me or change about me, I wasn't with it. And I don't remember exactly what the conversation was, but I was against whatever it was he was talking about. And it's like he just came out of nowhere bothering me. And then so um, next thing you know, I ended up outside and it was like a whole bunch of buildings. Like, you know how you uh, go to New York and you see like a bunch of buildings or you go downtown in any city, like major city, and you see a bunch of buildings. But they was like black, you know, like black buildings and they was high up. And I seen like this lady and she was talking. She was laying down talking to somebody on the phone and she kind of looked like me a little bit. Um, and I seen a helicopter flying in the sky while the buildings was at, and it was flying pretty high, like, in between the buildings, and then I was running, I was by myself, and I had came, like, from somewhere, I don't know, and I was out there by all these buildings, and the sky was blue, and I seen a little helicopter up there, and the lady was talking, and she was like, have you heard they song? Have you heard they song? And she called Marcus by his stage name. And, um, she knew the whole, she knew his whole stage name. Like, that shit hard to pronounce, man. I'm not even gonna lie to you. If, uh, you scroll down my song, I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave a link to the song or whatever. Uh, it's called, um, Feeling Your Vibes or I'm Feeling Your Vibes. And, uh, I'll leave a link in the description box or whatever. And, I originally did the song with the dude, a dude named Royal. He got a little group or whatever where it's really just him and anybody he want to add in. And it's called, he, he called himself Royal Rain. But the Holy Spirit showed me something about this dude. So I ain't really talked to the man since uh, I recorded the song. He, he basically already had the song recorded and then I just got on it. He asked me to get on the song and I got on the song. And then Marcus heard it, and I asked Marcus if he wanted to do the third verse, and Marcus did the third verse, but he he don't go by Marcus. He got another name. That shit hard to pronounce. I ain't even going to lie to y'all. But I got it uh, listed as his stage name on my channel, on the song, so y'all can know what his stage name is or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so... um. The lady was like, uh, it was like, it's like people trying to like blood leech out me and get clout for other people concerning my situation. Like, this ain't got nothing to do with no Rihanna, Chris Brown, or NBA Young Boy. So, what the hell is you hold coming to me talking about this shit for? I don't know none of them folk. The closest one that I can say that I can connect with is Chris Brown because I passed out on the side of the highway. Um, I remember if y'all look at my video, I kept passing out on the side of the highway. I kept passing out. And this man picked me up and let me come to his house. And when he brought me in the house, I fell asleep. He gave me, he brought me some Jack in the Box. I fell asleep on the couch. And while I was asleep on the couch, somebody came to me in the spirit and made love to me. And, uh, well, they ain't really, like, do it with me, but they, I don't know how the person made me come and have an orgasm, but... I was skinny. I had lost so much weight from starving out there in Texas and falling out on the side of the road, walking too many miles. And uh, you know that song, Trips to your Crib in the Middle of the Night? Hey, cause I put it down right, yeah, babe. I can put you on the flight. You know that a nigga like me can change your life, oh, baby. And I was bent down and I was shaking my ass, like, you know, like, oh, I was shaking my ass and I was squatting and shaking my butt. And I didn't even know I could dance like that. But this 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 male, he was in the spirit with me and he was like moving my butt and all that. And he was in the Chris Brown song with playing and whatever he did to me, he didn't even take off my pants. He made me come. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and he was like, everybody think you shot, but I know you a freak, little baby. And then I woke up, and then I was like, oh, I was like, I love this song now. So every time I hear Chris Brown's song, like, that's my song, y'all. Because whatever that man did to me while I was asleep, I ain't talking about Chris. I ain't get to see who the man was. I ain't really get to see who he was. It was like just the spirit. It was like in the spirit. Like, I ain't see it. But uh, he made me feel real good. Um, 
But uh, anyway, so let me go back to tell you what the lady said or whatever. So the lady was like, um, she was like, yeah, she was like, have you heard that, that song they did together? And she was on the phone with somebody. She was like, you heard that song they did together? She was like, uh, she said something about Irma. Irma is my grandmama and Irma is my cousin. My grandmama is big Irma and my cousin is little Irma, but neither one of them fat. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they might call her big Irma, but she not fat. That's just my grandma. And then, so, the lady was like, yeah, it sounded like she said Irma or Irma daughter. And then she was like, uh, yeah, she on the hood. The girl singing, and she sound real good. Cause at first I thought that she was going to talk about me because I know I'm on the hook of the song she was talking about. But then she was like, yeah, uh, she said something about Rihanna and Chris Brown. And I'm like, okay, Rihanna is not on that song, and Chris Brown is not on that song. I don't even know them folk. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then she was like, uh, but so I don't know. She was trying to say our relationship was kind of like similar to a Rihanna Chris Brown relationship. But uh, Marcus ain't never hit me. He ain't never um, put his hands on me. Um, like my baby daddy, my white baby daddy was abusing me. But Marcus, we done got into it. He done yelled at me. He done made me afraid, you know, at times. But you know, he ain't never like just punched me in my face. But he done did me dirty, you know, about a lot of stuff. Made me not trust him a, a lot of the time. But he ain't never um hit me. And so when when she said Rihanna Chris Brown, I was like um. Oh well, I don't know what she mean by that because. He, we ain't he ain't we ain't like them he ain't, i don't want him hitting on me you know and stuff so and then if y'all notice like chris brown got blackballed for a little while and then he blew up you know what i'm saying and you don't really hear too much of anything from rihanna um no i heard something from riri um I, or I was just playing her old music. But anyway, so I don't really like to talk about that situation. I really don't because it's not my business. But that's what the lady said in the vision. So anyway, so um, then she said uh, somebody the east side. She was like uh, something about the hook, like the girl on the hook, something about the east side. I don't know what she's talking about the east side because we weren't talking about the east side on the hook. But when I first came to Georgia, I was from the east side of Atlanta. I was raised on the east side. And if you're talking about Irma, Big Irma is my grandma. So, um, it sounded like she was saying, like, oh, uh, like, Irma do it on the track. Because my mama did. My mama named Tony. My mama is, um, my mama is deceased. And my mama is Irma daughter, big Irma daughter. That's my mama, Tony. But my mama passed away. So, if you could affiliate me with anybody, you will say big Irma. That's big Irma daughter. Because my mama deceased. And the only living uh parent that i have is my grandma my grandparent big irma so um i don't know if she was talking about my cousin or she was talking about me but my cousin is not on that hook i'm on that hook that's me singing on that hook and so um then she said my man's stage name and like i told y'all that's hard for me to pronounce is it's it hard for me to pronounce a lot of things but then i have to i'm very intelligent but i just really started dating this dude like february 14th and his stage name is long as hell and um i'll do another video introducing him i guess uh as his stage name but i'm gonna leave a link to the video and y'all will see what his name is and um I ain't really too embarrassed about that or whatever. Because, like, when I got with him, I got with him as Marcus. Like, I ain't get with him as his stage name. But it's a little creepy to me because the lady said, yeah, she called him uh, by his stage name. And was like, yeah, and he on the uh, third verse. And then she was like, uh, she said some creepy ass shit. She was like, an NBA young boy on the first verse. I said, oh, I woke up after that. And that was all I could remember was this lady saying NBA young boy was on the first verse. And then I think she was saying I was on the song. But I know for sure she said my man was on the song. And she was talking about the song that I put on my channel, Feeling Your Vibes or whatever. And I was on the hook and everything. So um, that creeped me out. And when I woke up, that's all I could remember was her talking about uh, Rihanna, Chris Brown, and NBA young boy. And so... um. I told Marcus about the vision or whatever, and I had to sit and remember the rest of it. And my son and I, I had another baby in the room with me, and so um, 
I thought about it. I was like, let me look this up and see what's going on with NBA Youngboy because the last that uh, I heard, first of all, I don't think nothing about we're going to get in no, uh, on no song together or nothing like that because I'm seeing a lot of demonic shit and it's a lot of witchcraft, which is doing bullshit. And I think they just want me to sound stupid about talking about people that I don't even fucking know. But I'm going to just tell the truth anyway about what I'm seeing in the spirit. So... Anyway, so uh, I remember something about NBA Youngboy had got locked up uh, in a police chase. Man, them police, man, them folk chased me all over the goddamn place. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I man, I don't even want to go into detail about that. I don't know what this man's life is, but when I seen it on media takeout, I was like, hold on. So y'all going to uh, charge a young black man for having guns, but y'all got all these racist ass white gang that got all these guns and opioids getting prescribed by the fucking doctor, but you gonna send a young black man to prison because he owned a weapon, you gonna send him to prison for some drugs when y'all legally prescribing these white boy all these damn uh, drugs that's fucking them up. And so, uh, you know, uh, after that, there was like one person that was like, yeah, that's, that's true, that's what they do. I don't know NBA young boy, so I'm not trying to take over him. You know what I'm saying? I just made an observation, you know, because I know a lot of the uh, racist white men out here, they got hella guns, they got hella weapons that they going to do some bullshit with, and ain't nobody going to take them from them. And then the doctors is over there giving them way harder drugs than what these black men is getting pulled over for, and they legally prescribing these boys that shit, and they walking around on that bullshit. You know, uh, making up excuses as to why they need to take this shit and using the medical system to launder uh, money and, and give people a drug that they shouldn't even fucking have. And y'all steady locking black men up for the shit. You know, for little petty ass shit. But anyway, so uh, I don't want to go into that because I don't know that man personally. So um, I had heard that uh, they had on the radio or something, I think, I heard from somewhere that they had revoked his uh, bail. Because, you know, when a black man got money to be able to bond out, uh, they try to control you. If they want to have you behind bar, they want to have you in behind bar. Ain't no telling what these system and people done done to this man. Because I know what I done seen about the entertainment industry. I know what I done seen about a lot of these wicked ass folk. And they'll try to do blackmail you. And most rappers end up in jail while the Illuminati trying to fuck them over. They end up putting them in a the jail cell to try to break them. But I don't know this man personally to say that that's what's going on with him. But I do because some people say he was just crazy. I don't know. And I'm so I'm not taking up for anybody. I'm just making observations. And um, I heard that they had revoked his bail and said he could not place bond. That he couldn't be out on bond. You know, I've heard things about him abusing women. I heard a lot of things about him. So I'm not going into detail to be like, oh, free NBA young boy or nothing like that. But I'm just telling y'all what I saw. I'll be honest about what I heard. And so, um, I'm like, well, this man's still in jail because, uh, I heard that they weren't going to let him make bail. And so, um, that the jail, that the, uh, judge revoked his bond. And so I looked it up on the news and for sure he's still in jail. That's what it said on the latest news, um, that they trying to give him a long time in prison for possessing a firearm. Now, you're a celebrity where people will try to rob you. You got people chasing you. You know, uh, you need security and you can't have a motherfucking firearm. Like, that was the same thing I was thinking with Kodak Black. Oh, he can't have a gun? Like, I understand if they feel like you're going to go and do some dumb ass shit with the guns, that's different. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, just having a gun and me having shot a gun, I know what their attitude is towards black people on the guns, period. They don't want to damn show, don't want to see a black man with no gun now. I'm telling you. So, you know, even now, like, you know, I, 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 I want me some guns. You know what I'm saying? Especially after what these people been out here trying to pull on me and this baby, you know what I'm saying, behind the scene, And I've been telling the truth about what they been doing and I still ain't had nobody stand up and tell them to stop but then as soon as somebody catch me toting around the fucking pistol they gonna try to say oh Andrea Jones is crazy oh Andrea Jones done shot somebody again oh Andrea Jones done this but you ain't gonna tell that ass back the fuck down she pray to leave her the fuck alone you ain't gonna say that so I don't know what these people go through that get caught with these guns I don't know how many of these same people that done targeted me been following these folk around trying to rob these folk. You don't know who family done sold them out, friends done sold them out. You don't know what the fuck going on. And everybody ain't quick to just come forward and talk about what's going on in this industry. Because I'm going to call these hoes out. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm going to call them out because they fake and they on that fuckery. But these niggas, a lot of these young boys, you know what I'm saying? They just want to fit in with everybody. And they don't be realizing people that's plotting on them behind the scenes to see destruction in their lives. So when I seen that he was still in jail, you know, I was like, damn. I don't look like uh he nobody finna do no verse with him. He behind bars, you know, and he ain't on my song. That's a dude named Roy Rain. So I think they just doing some witchcraft to try to make me sound like I'm stupid, you know what I'm saying, or some shit. Because um another thing is I think that people trying to get me to get clout to Marcus music career because he got a whole damn album uh that he done recorded in the studio and sat down and wrote. He tried to argue with me and call me trash on my channel. He tried to say, and you, yo, you can't rap anyway, and you trash and all of this, right? But I actually got some fans. I actually got views, you know. But I wrote them songs in, like, a couple of hours. I can write a song in, like, two hours and then get on my phone and record it. It's not like I'm spending a whole week. This man done spent a whole six months to a year writing on the same song you going you going to sound better if you've been right working on a long time. I don't have time for that. My mind, my lifestyle is not like that. If I write something, I got to get it done quick or it'll never get done cuz I don't got time. I got kids, I got shit to do, I got a case, I'm pregnant. I got to move on a quicker quicker note. And then as far as studio, I don't have money to go to the studio and spend money to get professional sound quality. And another thing is when he in the studio recording his song, everybody quiet. And letting him record because he paying money. If I'm recording somewhere, they try their best to fuck me up. They try their best to distract me. They try their best to make noise around me. So my songs come out fucked up. And then you got a grown ass nigga want to step to my face and tell me you calling me trash. You know what I'm saying? I listened to his music uh, yesterday. And I was listening to it. And, you know, it do sound pretty good. Um... It got to grow on you, you know what I'm saying? Like, his sound, like, he got a real different sound than a lot of dudes that's in the industry. But he do have familiar sounds to uh, some of the older greats that we've had, like Tupac Shakur and things like that. So, he sound a lot like, he 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 learned a lot from them and listened to a lot of older rap. Like, like he's very well versed as far as rap history. Um, cause a lot of rappers come in just copying, uh, the new age rappers and things like that. But Marcus have something special, um, and it got to grow on you. <clears throat> Some people might, might, when they first hear it, they might click with it right away. Some people might not never click with it cause he got a different sound. It ain't like what you use, like what you used to hearing or whatever. But as far as me. Man, God done told me I'm so cold. I could be writing for Megan Thee Stallion. You know what I'm saying? I could be actually writing songs for these women that's actually in the industry. And then um, Marcus was like, he could teach me some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, some stuff that he know. And that'll make me better. You feel what I'm saying? But at the same time, I feel like it's some things that I could teach him too. You know what I'm saying? About just some of the content of some of the shit you know what i'm saying but when you dealing with a man they feel like you can't tell them shit you know so honestly my channel my music regardless of who believe in me or not i believe in myself and i believe that my confidence is what has fueled andrea jones what has really made a name for me is that i got on songs all by myself and ripped that shit and put the shit out whether you like it or not that i'm andrea jones you know what I'm saying? And it, it garnered me enough attention to where I got rappers and female rappers and male rappers and singers and people like that knowing who I am. Regardless if you call me trash or not, you know who I am. And he asked me if I kept doing, he keep asking me have I recorded any music while they've been doing all this drama and staging all this drama around me and stressing me and my baby had to death. He got the nerve to ask me have I recorded any music. If nobody wasn't bothering me and making my life a living hell, I have some more songs by now, but I already decided to switch my shit up a little bit, you know, switch up my style a little bit. And then I'm going to ultimately go to doing gospel R&B. So, I'm not really worried about whatever anybody is trying to do as far as rap music or worrying about my rap career or 
uh, trying to compare me with anybody because I'm Andrea Joan. I, I morph, you know, from this to that to that to this and ain't no telling what I'm going to be doing the next time you hear me drop a song because I just love to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just love to do it and, and when I want to do it, I do it. And I ain't been doing it. I ain't been doing it because people been on some bullshit and on some hating ass shit and I ain't been able to do any music or whatever. And then I've been focusing on my little baby that I'm with child with and thinking about my little boy and telling about a lot that's been going on and it's just been a lot. So I haven't been able to work on any music and I ain't gonna lie. I feel like his purpose was try to try to discourage me and he been asking me to go to the studio with him and do a song with him. But I was like, well, if I'm so trash, then why you want me to do a song with you? You know what I'm saying? And he said he was just trying to make me mad and apologize. But I done heard some people talking about me for real. And I really don't give a fuck because I'm Andre Jones. I'm going to keep doing me regardless. My voice is my voice. My lyrics is my lyrics. My time is my time. Whatever I want to do with my time. So, um... You know, I feel like that was real fucked up, and I've had a lot of people try to discourage me throughout my life, especially men that I was with, you know, and uh, it's almost like they trying to use me to give some clout to his name. Uh, to his stage name and he got a whole album he been working on. Ain't nobody took me in the studio and did an album for me. So you not finna let no man dog me out and get no clout off of me. Now if you if he doing right by me, you know, and then I don't mind promoting his shit. But don't be, don't try to be slick about it. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to dog me out and try to listen me and then try to exalt somebody else. Don't do that shit. You know, uh, cause I didn't even, I don't even remember his stage name. The lady remembered it in the vision, but I don't remember it. I got to go and look at it and read it and see exactly how it's spelled, pronounce it, and then tell y'all what his stage name is. You know, but this is about my kids and stuff i'll leave a link to the song and everything but i don't, I don't feel right about people trying to get cloud off of me and then trying to stop me from recording music and having my own career you know uh the most high believe in me and jesus christ believe in whatever it is that i put my hand to i prosper with doing so after somebody try to i already told y'all that he was trying to like stop me from making my music after somebody try to bring me down and try to talk bad about me and i know that i could have talked bad about you from the jump but i didn't do that then i'm a side eye your ass and i'm not gonna do nothing around you so this is why i have not been recording no music around them i ain't been trying to do nothing but put the information out about my children and everything because once i get in my own place and get in my own apartment and i got my my shit together then i can record but these people is trying to make sure that i'm not successful like i told y'all it was something about oh andrea could win awards and andrea could uh, do this and do that and then you got all the other people trying to come in and exalt their talent and tear me down this is my fucking channel and everybody got their own channel where they it's about them this my motherfucking channel and this shit about me and when i did do a song with them that was cool but this is my 